There's so much we want to learn and absorb, and we just wish we could get through it faster and remember it all. But it's not just something only extremely talented people can do. Instead, it has everything to do with three factors we'll be learning in this video to take you from this to this. The first of three factors we'll be discussing is to always read for purpose rather than enjoyment. Now before you just skip ahead to the actual reading techniques I'm going to be teaching you in this video, hear me out because you will fail miserably if you skip this step. You see, my freshman year in high school, I handed in my first assignment for English class. It was a book report and I was so proud of how hard I worked on it and how great it was. It was only a few days later that the English teacher pulled me aside to have a serious conversation about the F I got on that assignment. Ouch. But fast forward about eight or nine years, and not only did I publish a 300 page academic text without a PhD at 23 years old, but I had read a combined 800 plus books and articles to do so, with detailed notes on them all in the span of a year. And that wasn't the first time I did something like that either. So then what made the difference? Did I just start finding books that I enjoyed reading? Not exactly. A lot of people who discuss tips on how to read faster do suggest doing just that. And yeah, it does make sense if you read things you enjoy, because if you do that, you're gonna retain more, and studies have shown that. But the advice of just reading what you like isn't really practical and for two key reasons. Number one, if it's something you're assigned for a class or something you're assigned by your job, you have to read it whether you like it or not. And number two, in order to learn new things, you often do have to read things you don't enjoy. For example, when I was reading about my undergraduate honors thesis, reading about the history of Virginia wasn't exactly exciting to me. No offense to Virginia. And when I was writing the book I mentioned before, reading the 784 page Critique of Pure Reason by Immanuel Kant wasn't exactly exciting either. But but in each case, I felt so strongly about the value that I could create through what I wanted to write about that that in itself took these unenjoyable books to something that I actually enjoyed because I had a purpose tied to it. Focus on finding an actual purpose or a goal to what you're reading instead of just liking what you read, and research has shown you're more likely to retain it. For the second of these three factors, let's get into some reading techniques, which I call skimming and scanning. Now these techniques are very different from what you might be thinking they are, and I've been able to help countless students achieve top scores on SAT tests, ACT tests, by improving their reading speed and also the accuracy and retention of their reading. You might have heard from others who give tips on how to read faster that you should use two techniques. Namely, use a tracer such as your finger to guide your eye across the text as you read while also stopping what's called subvocalization or sounding out the words in your head as you read. Now, as incredibly effective as these techniques are, you can add rocket fuel to them by doing what I'm about to tell you. Let's start with skimming. Now, in order to understand what I mean by skimming, let's take a look at one of my favorite personal development books of all time, Atomic Habits. And yes, this is a little damaged because my dog got to it, but she's still a good girl. Our brain is not naturally very good at picking up every single detail we read if we read from beginning to end straight through. Instead, we're much better at remembering what comes at the beginning and then also at the end. What we remember in between tends to be a little bit fuzzy. So for nonfiction books like this, and only for nonfiction books, and I'll discuss why in a bit, we'll start by reading the first and last sentences of the introductory paragraph, followed by the first sentence of each body paragraph, and then finally the first and last sentence of the concluding paragraph. Let's do this together. Okay, so let's read this paragraph and let's treat it as our intro paragraph. We'll read the first and last lines, and if we need to read just a little bit more, we might. But let's see how much we actually have to read in order to get enough information. Humans are also prone to fall for exaggerated versions of reality. I didn't quite understand enough here, so maybe I'll read one more line. Junk food, for example, drives our reward system into a frenzy. Well, now I kind of know what it's about. When you don't know where your next meal is coming from, eating as much as possible is an excellent strategy for survival. Now let's read the first line of each paragraph except the conclusion. Today, however, we live in a calorie-rich environment. A primary goal of food science is to create products that are more attractive to consumers. Other processed foods enhance dynamic contrast, which refers to items with a combination of sensations, like crunchy and creamy. Ultimately, such strategies enable food scientists to find the bliss point for each product, the precise combination of salt, sugar, and fat that excites your brain and keeps you coming back for more. The modern food industry and the overeating habits it has spawned is just one example of the second law of behavior change. Make it attractive. Look around. Well, obviously this is a short sentence, so I'll read one more. Society is filled with highly engineered versions of reality that are more attractive than the world our ancestors evolved in. If history serves as a guide, the opportunities of the future will be more attractive than those of today. Maybe I need a little bit 
bit more context for this, so I'll read one more sentence. The trend is for rewards to become more concentrated and stimuli to become more enticing. So this is the conclusion paragraph, so we'll read both the beginning sentence and the ending sentence. If you want to increase the odds that a behavior will occur, then you need to make it attractive. To do this, we must start by understanding what a craving is and how it works. And so I think we understood his main points from this passage that we need to make a good habit more attractive and a bad habit less attractive. This method, by the way, is a guideline. If you didn't feel like you got everything you wanted to get out of the main idea of what you just read, then be sure to read at least a few more lines. The core idea here is simple. The bulk of the main idea and the main argument is in the spots that we just read by skimming. And that's simply because there's a certain structure to nonfiction passages. It pretty much always follows this pattern. Starts with the main idea, followed by some supporting detail to bolster that main idea, followed by usually some sort of evidence to support that supporting detail. So if we ever need more details, because we read only in the places we just read with the skimming method, we're now more likely to know how to selectively go back and find the details we would want more information about. If you want to learn specifically how to read stories or fiction books faster, then the skimming method won't really work here. Instead, we'll have to use what I call the scanning method. And that's a whole video topic in itself, so you can check that out in the description below. And so that brings us to the third and final factor in the reading and retention process. And this factor helps you specifically to retain what you read long term. Jim Quick has a book called Limitless, and this is a really great science-based read if you really want to learn more about everything I'm about to tell you. Probably the single most useful tip he gives in this book for how to remember what you read is his acronym FASTER. For more details on all the components of this acronym, I highly suggest reading this book. But I'm going to share two parts of it here that have personally helped me and that you can implement today. The T in FASTER stands for TEACH. Study after study has actually shown that if you teach what you just learned, you're way more likely to remember it. You might say, yeah, but I just learned it. How can I teach it? But that's exactly the point. Actively planning to prepare a small presentation on what you learned forces you to go back and fill in the gaps of material you think you understood, but maybe you didn't. And it'll help you understand which parts you understood most and which parts you understood least. One of the best ways to do this is to get into a study group or a discussion group with people who meet regularly to do this sort of thing. And if you don't have people around you who will do this sort of thing, then maybe you just need some new friends. The E in this acronym is ENTER, meaning enter notes in a notebook. Now, I know what you might be thinking. A lot of gurus out there trash talk notes as if they're useless, but it all comes down to how you use those notes and actually how you take notes. Most people take notes by highlighting or underlining as they read, or you might even just take notes on the side on some key points. And one of the problems is that most of us never actually go back and look at the notes, or if we do look at the notes, they're kind of confusing and not very helpful. How I suggest you take notes instead is the technique that I used to read over 800 books and articles in one year. In fact, not only did I read them, but I took detailed notes on all of them. Yes, I was a little insane. How I was able to do this though was through a note compilation system. As I read, I would take color-coded sticky notes or flags and stick them next to the appropriate parts as I read. For example, blue for details about Kantian ethics, yellow for utilitarianism, red for discussions of neuroscience of morality, etc. I may or may not write certain key ideas on those sticky notes or flags, and then I would create separate word documents documents for each topic. Later, I would go back and review what I flagged and then actively select and filter out the most relevant details I needed for the project I was working on or the point I was trying to make in the essay, and then enter only those specific quotes from the book into the Word document. If you really want to remember what you read long term, this is one of the most effective ways to do it because it gives you the best of both worlds. Not only an accurate summary of what you read, but also a balance of more detailed information that's uniquely relevant to your situation. How do you do the same thing? when it comes to lectures, courses, documentaries, conversations, etc. Be sure to watch this next video to find out.